Another explosion of noise inside the Eden Arena here in Prague as the two teams make their way onto the field. West Ham fans have waited a long, long time for this. 17 years since their team was last in a major final. 43 years since they last won a major trophy. West Ham will play in all white this evening with orange trim. The players have made their way 10 yards onto the field and from our viewpoint at the moment uh, they stand with their backs to us. Both sets of players have marched their way past the match ball set up on one plinth and the Europa Conference League trophy gleaming uh, in the evening sunshine here in Prague just sitting on the halfway line there 58 years since West Ham won their only major European trophy at Wembley in 1965 62 years since Fiorentina won the first ever Cup Winners Cup back in 1961 the sights and sounds are quite incredible I know the sounds will be coming through loud and clear the teams now are just waiting for the handshakes let's try and describe what we can see out on the field it's just being cleared up in front of us now giant black and green Europa Conference League banners with huge emblems of each club the club badge on each of them quite arty representations as well next to the two sets of players just six rectangular strips making out the club flags here in team three bright purple three white and West Ham with the claret and blue Scott let's talk about the game very quickly before it starts it's it's so difficult to call this one they're, they're very different in terms of styles these two teams I think they're quite similar in terms of clubs in terms of their their history what they've won they're standing in the game in their respective countries but tonight over the 90 minutes may it be 120 minutes may it be penalties I think it's going to be really, really tight. I, I do as well. I mean, I, you predicted a 1-0 win for West Ham, haven't you? I predicted this could go all the way to penalties. I really do think it will be tight. Look, Fiorentina love to have the ball. You know, they love possession. They love the, the short passing. And they love to press high if they possibly can. West Ham love to sit back, be organised, defensively sound, and counter-attack when they can. So I think we know what kind of football match we're going to see. It's just a question of the individual battles. Who's going to be up for this? And we saw in the Europa League final, after about maybe 60 minutes, the fear of failure came over everybody and they just sat back and were scared to really, you know, grasp the nettle to go and win the, the competition. I hope we don't see that tonight. I hope we see a good game of football and obviously I hope West Ham win. Former West Ham defender Scott Minto with us on Five Live and BBC Sounds. Just about ready to go. Europa Conference League final this evening. Uh, and of course Champions League final to come commentary on that on Saturday Declan Rice comes running back onto the pitch having uh, disposed of the uh, Fiorentina club pennant he was handed by opposite captain Cristiano Biraghi and once again he goes running towards the West Ham fans to ask for more support more encouragement as if they needed that the West Ham team then the starting 11 uh, for what has to be for pretty much all these players the biggest night in their footballing careers Alphonse Ariola in goal a back four of Vladimir Sofal playing on home turf uh, in his former stadium formerly a Slavia Prague player as was Thomas Socek Kurt Zuma naive forget at centre back Emerson starts ahead of Aaron Cresswell at left back Socek alongside the captain Declan Rice we all think this is going to be his final game for West Ham as always he will give it absolutely everything Jared Bowen Lucas Pakatar Saeed Ben Rama starts on the left some debate ahead of the game whether that might be Pablo Fornals but Ben Rama's been in great form it's an attacking selection from David Moyes and Mikel Antonio has seven goals in this competition in ten appearances he starts through the middle West Ham all in white orange trim at the bottom of the shirt white shorts orange band around the top of the socks and they are playing from right to left in the first half and I'll give you the Fiorentina team uh, in just a second because we're underway they're playing in their very familiar bright purple Kwame with a shot that's blocked on the edge of the penalty area Bonaventura tries to hit a shot on the turn West Ham have dealt with that Ben Rama gets on the ball in his bright orange boots what a fabulous pass that is in 
under the feet of Pacatar and suddenly West Ham are streaming forward. He has support from Antonio on the left. Antonio jinks back onto his right foot, hits a scuff shot and goalkeeper Teleciano gets down and makes the first save of the game within the first minute. Really encouraging counter-attack for West Ham, Scott. Well, I'll tell you what, both sides went at it because just before that counter-attack, Kwame got down the left-hand side and tried to have a shot himself. It was a, a weak shot, well blocked by Kurzuma. Then, yes, that's exactly what David Moyes wants to do. Get them on the counter-attack. Really good pass from Ben Rama. Pakatata to Antonio. I thought he actually should have played in a Ben Rama again, but he didn't. He had the shot. But it's a positive start from both sides, I have to say. Yeah, just seen the contrasting styles right at the start of the game, and it's a really entertaining, enterprising start. Jared Bowen on the ball. Inside left channel, up to the corner of the box. Lays it off to Ben Rama. Here goes Emerson at speed on the outside. Ben Rama can't find him. He's tackled by the Brazilian right-back Dodo, and that will be a throw-in for West Ham. 14 games they've played in this competition this season 1-13 drawn 1 they have not lost a single game Fiorentina have lost 3 uh, along the way but obviously that counts for nothing tonight there can only be one winner Vladimir Sofal's lofted ball down the right and Jared Bowen is in a little bit later Cristiano Baraghi who seems to be in real pain he was caught by Bowen who had his foot up and Baraghi is sitting up and immediately saying that has to be a yellow card he stopped the writhing around this is partly Scott what we were talking about ahead of the game absolutely Jared Bowen all he's done is try to block Baraghi and Baraghi's foot has actually come into Jared Bowen you've got to give a foul really even though technically speaking he's not actually made contact with him it's been the other way round Jared Bowen it is a foul but Raghi absolutely trying to get a yellow card for Jared Bowen early on a fair play to the referee my goodness Anthony Taylor had a tough night didn't he at the Europa League oh, by the way I thought he was excellent over the whole night in really extreme conditions that was a good decision there getting a little touchy between Luca Ranieri the Fiorentina centre back and Mikhail Antonio Antonio was sort of moving the ball back for where the free kick should be taken Ranieri didn't like it so an edge right at the start of the game an incredible deafening noise bedlam in terms of noise inside this stadium really disappointing me as we look around now that the game's kicked off I can see 50 or 60 maybe 100 empty seats that is absolutely crazy given the amount of fans that have travelled here uh, without a ticket Fiorentina take their free kick Europa Conference League final Fiorentina nil West Ham nil a spicy start as Zuma is up to win a header Declan Rice gets his first touch of the evening nods it down and it's intercepted by Gonzalez for Fiorentina he runs at Emerson he lays the ball off to the right Dodo gets it back to him this is danger for West Ham dummy from Gonzalez trying to head down the byline again slides in then Gonzalez is now writhing around on the floor as if he's been badly injured he stayed down inside the penalty area a few plastic pint glasses raining down on him as he remains unmoved inside the box we definitely don't want to see that I can see the stewards moving in to try and stop that Fiorentina have the ball inside their own half and they will stop the game kick it out of play and it's another stoppage so after the first entertaining couple of minutes we suddenly had a couple of challenges Declan Rice sliding in very cleanly got the ball Gonzalez has gone down holding his face as if Rice has caught him he might have flicked him but goodness me that's an overreaction again well, first of all it was fantastic defending from Declan Rice because he actually got done by Gonzalez Gonzalez shaped across he cut inside but Declan Rice got his body there he did actually catch Gonzalez in the face but Gonzalez are trying to make the most of it no way is it a foul again good refereeing Declan Rice comes out but yes what we don't want to see is it, especially at the West Ham end things being thrown onto the pitch yeah I can see 9 or 10 of those plastic pint glasses that are lying just behind the dead ball line on the right and David Moyes we just had a close up of him giving it the steeliest of Moyes stares I think he's very unhappy with those couple of reactions to West Ham challenges from the Fiorentina players in the press conference yeah Yesterday, he was talking about different footballing cultures, but he had every confidence, he said, that the referee, the Spaniard, Carlos Del Cerro Grande, was going to be able to handle it uh, tonight. Ranieri comes forward to win a header. Declan Rice cushions one down to Ben Rama. Lovely one-two between Ben Rama and Pakatar. Ben Rama plays it back to Emerson, and Emerson inside the West Ham half rolls it back to a get. Scott Minter. For Fiorentina, a really good passing side and a really good footballing side, and they don't need to go down this route. You know, David Moyes has called it yesterday ahead of the game you know um, Vincenzo Italiano has already said that yeah they might try and look for, for doing things in a certain way which we kind of know what that means they don't need to do that the referee needs to be very careful that we don't by the end of the night be talking about such a, a really horrible final in the way that we did with the Europa League 
so far, so good from the ref. Yeah. Let's hope he keeps that up. Five and a half minutes in, not seen too much football, but the football that we have seen has been quite encouraging in terms of the entertainment. Sofian Amrabat, you'll remember him from Morocco's brilliant run to the semi-finals at the World Cup, plays in central midfield. Dodo plays across the half to Rolando Mandragora in Fiorentina's midfield three. They have Pietro Terracciano as their goalkeeper. Dodo the right back. Biragi the captain at left back. Ranieri the centre back alongside the Serb. Nikola Milenkovic. Ranieri's ball forward is just a little bit too long there and goes out for a goal kick to West Ham. Midfield three. Amrabat. Giacomo Bonaventura. Rolando Mandragora. And the big call up front actually from the manager Vincenzo Italiano to start Luka Jovic in his first season at Fiorentina having joined from Real Madrid in the summer Nicolas Gonzalez and Christian Kouame either side of him Fiorentina possession plenty of goals in this Fiorentina team but they can be sloppy at the back as well playing in the gorgeous distinctive bright purple La Viola they're known as and their fans unmistakable around the city of Prague and in this stadium tonight Kouame just inside the West Ham half plays back into his own half Amrabat with the shiny bald head sits deepest and just comes chugging along to his right low pass into the feet of Milenkovic where's number four for Fiorentina Amrabat's encouraged forward across the halfway line can barely hear yourself think inside this stadium diagonal ball away to the right Gonzalez stretches in the air can't control that and it goes out for a West Ham throw in the left back position seven minutes into the Europa Conference League final settling down now Fiorentina nil West Ham nil yeah Sofia Amrabat so key to this Fiorentina side and, and just to keep things ticking over he's always looking for the ball off the centre back to a split which means that the full backs can then push on the wide players sometimes can come inside or stay wide themselves as well so I just think West Ham need to make sure that it's get someone close to Amrabat because he's the one who starts these attacks Fiorentina flags giant flags away to our left constantly waving they're dismayed by that ball given away by Dodo Antonio intercepted couldn't release Ben Rama on the left Ariola all in bright yellow the West Ham goalkeeper has started every single game in this competition if your prediction comes true Scott Minton when we get into a penalty shootout I think there is every chance if David Moyes has a substitution available to him that Lucas Fabianski could potentially come on for a shootout more on that in a second here's Bonaventura he's dangerous for Fiorentina to his left Mandragora good hit with his left foot well wide but struck it really well goal kick for West Ham but Fabianski for the penalties is, is a definite possibility isn't absolutely it, I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen at all and look for the record I hope I'm wrong I hope West Ham are 3-0 up at half time and see the game out quite easily in the second half I don't think that is going to happen we do think it's going to be very very tight indeed Ariola, I wouldn't be surprised if he's West Ham's number one goalkeeper next season but in terms of penalties he didn't do very well earlier this season in the Carabao Cup against Blackburn and uh, Fabianski has made saves or forced players almost to, to miss as well so yeah absolutely a possibility West Ham's clearance from the goal kick immediately picked up by their opponents Fiorentina Biragi is the captain you can see the uh, the green captain's armband wrapped around his left bicep seems perfectly okay after the early Jared Bowen challenge he is dangerous he does create for Fiorentina they've got the ball inside their own half they like to defend with a very high line and they do like to press teams when they're in possession inside their own half they do take risks Fiorentina here's Milenkovic casually curling a pass over the head of West Ham's lone striker Mikhail Antonio he goes chasing across the half Ranieri doesn't see an option ahead of him so comes back to his goalkeeper Terraciano making the early save from Antonio he's all in bright red and he's got the Fiorentina fans all in purple directly behind him Gonzalez with the slick back jet black hair lays it off to Amrabat Gonzalez in central midfield Declan Rice comes tearing in to try and win it and work it away from him but a long ball forward into the West Ham half is for no one in particular and Emerson is able to turn and collect uh, just got a bit scrappy in the last couple of minutes hasn't it after what was a very very good start West Ham just trying to keep themselves organised Fiorentina having the ball but not able to break the West Ham defence down at the moment who are getting their wingers back to really help out just saw an example of the Fiorentina pressing there we've now got Dodo the Brazilian at right back for Fiorentina he's down hurt after the latest challenge so we're going to get another stoppage in play just an example there before though Scott Bonaventura who suddenly was herring in and very close to closing Areola down there so I mean West Ham will know what's coming on that front yeah absolutely you know 
David Moyes would be all over it and told the, the players exactly what they're going to do. So sometimes West Ham might have to go long. You know, Mikel Antonio, I think that battle there is, is absolutely fascinating. I really do with him and the two centre-halves of Milenkovic and Ranieri. It's going to be a real physical battle. Uh, Dodo does have a bloodied nose uh, down on his back, so uh, clearly was caught in the challenge there. So he's just receiving treatment right now. We have a stoppage in play. Ten minutes gone in the first half. Europa Conference League final here in Prague. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Dodo actually jumps into Ben Rama to try and win a header and smashes his nose into the back of Ben Rama's head. Yeah, that can be quite painful as well. You know, obviously Ben Rama had nothing to do with that. He, he's the one who was almost head butted. But you done that, Scott? Before you must have done that. I have done that before, and it's painful. Yeah, not recently though. I hope not for a long time. I'm now I, I'm, I'm much happier sitting up here watching than being down there nowadays Alan yeah it's quite something isn't it Scott I mean we're talking about this but for for these two clubs you know I was chatting to West Ham fans in the middle of Prague yesterday who are still pinching themselves that they are they're here that their club is here that they're part of this occasion and it does feel very very special not only in the city but in the stadium tonight yeah and I think Mark mentioned it at the top didn't he about you know for these clubs this I think it justifies really uh, the, the fact that UEFA have done this you know people were laughing about it and saying it was a terrible competition Pakatar down the right for Jared Bowen Bowen down by the byline delays the cross runs at Ranieri into the penalty area stands it up to the far post headed away by Milenkovic the ball bounces inside the Fiorentina half Zuma is there quickly for West Ham so foul is closed down by Jovic and West Ham get the throw Scott yeah first time he's actually seen Jared Bowen get on the ball and have a bit of space and he, he came inside and it was a cross that wasn't good enough and he's think that towards the far post got to beat the first man there but yeah this competition you know look at it you can feel the atmosphere you can hear both sets of fans as well absolutely loving it and what it would mean for either side to win this European trophy would be amazing long throw in from the right Declan Rice drives it just wide with his right foot from the edge of the box didn't quite catch it as he wanted to but very nearly caught Terraciano out and it's gone behind for the goal kick now that would be a story if Declan Rice scores a winner for West Ham tonight imagine that imagine he gets that one goal that you said oh. and they keep the clean sheet lift the trophy get the winner but you're right he's, he scuffed it there a little bit I mean he had to take, take it first time and he wasn't quite able to get full control of it 13 minutes in Fiorentina nil West Ham nil another Fiorentina player down it was so foul who challenged for the aerial ball that was played down the left Kuame's down holding his lower back and Fiorentina have been given the free kick and so foul throws his arms up uh, in despair shaking his head still uh, the decision given against him I mean is that a free kick Scott? I, I think he's coming at him too far I think it probably is a free kick I would just I don't want to be negative I don't want to start on a negativity by saying look at Fiontina they're getting down and they're staying down as well and to be fair to Kwame he got up there but it's been almost half a dozen occasions we're only 13 minutes into the first half where they've gone down and they haven't gone it got back it up immediately yeah uh, Bonaventura has it out of possession by Pakatar. Pakatar got the ball. The problem there was he came in from behind. Bonaventura felt the contact and went down. I think that has to be uh, a free kick. And to be fair to Bonaventura, this time he it does. Yeah, gets up, gets on with it, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I agree with you, Scott. I think it's, um, I think it's unfair to to tar. I mean, we know certain teams do it more than others, but we know that West Ham, if they get ahead in this game tonight, they will employ the tactic as well, won't they, to try and shut things out? Everyone does it. Yeah. Everyone and look, it's game management and, and if you wind it up with 10-15 minutes to go then of course you do it but if it's nil-nil and we haven't even got past the 15 minute mark and you've gone down four or five times yeah. then you know come on this is a game of football here let's try and entertain and, but, but win of course at the first that's the most important thing but if you can play in the right way that's also important Ben Rama trying to get the ball off Bonaventura lovely step over and shoulder swing from Bonaventura to lose it goes wide left uh, to Biragi Bowen closes that space down so quickly comes hurtling in blocks the cross and it goes out for a throw into Fiorentina but I'll tell you what you mentioned earlier about Biragi and the amount of assists he's made as well that was a really good block there from Jared Bowen because he needs to keep tight he needs to do a job defensively tonight because Baragi's got a wand of a left foot and he whips the ball in with pace and power Fiorentina attacking the goal away to our right behind it a giant wall of claret and blue long throw into the West Ham penalty area West Ham in white kit the 
receiving. Socek with a double header, heads it straight up in the air. Pakatar with a good lead. Now he's gone down holding the back of his head. He stayed down. Play continues. Here's Amrabat. Finds Gonzalez, edge of the box. Gonzalez thinks about the right foot shot. Declan Rice gets in his way and suddenly West Ham are going to turn it into a counter. Pakatar's back on his feet, just rubbing the back of his head. Emerson with the ball back here to Ariola. Ariola's got to be careful. Jovic coming towards him, but Ariola knew he had time. Floats the pass out to the right. Lovely first touch from Sofal. Knocks it down the line to Antonio. Antonio charging at Fiorentina defender. Still going. Great run from Antonio. Slightly overruns it into Amrabat. Pakatar now on the ball. He's tackled. And Fiorentina are able to bring the ball away. The game is opening up. Fiorentina nil. West Ham nil. Amrabat brings it up to the halfway line. Series of quick one-twos from the men in purple. And then they work it back to Luca Ranieri uh, again. 16 minutes played. Fiorentina nil. West Ham nil. Scott Minto watching alongside. Yeah, just a, another little thing about Declan Rice that people don't always see. Just there. Gonzalez was 20 yards out. If he'd have got half a yard and had a shot, who knows? He could have cracked that in the top corner. But Declan Rice defended so well. In the end, it, Gonzalez kind of gave the ball away because he put him under pressure. Little things like that that you don't notice that he does so well and makes him such a good player. Yeah, all he did was move into the space, move into the channel. He was a presence, didn't make a challenge, didn't even go to make a challenge. Pakatar is tackled on the halfway line by Milenkovic. Good, clean challenge. Here's Bonaventura. There's Rice again, just suddenly blocking out the light, blocking the path, and Bonaventura doesn't fancy it. Comes back to the halfway line to Amrabat. Here's Milenkovic. Fiorentina centre-back at walking pace midway inside the West Ham half looking for the ball over the top to Jovic safely bounces into the arms of Ariola. he sprints out to the edge of his penalty area clutching the ball in his right arm doesn't necessarily see an option on so drops the ball at his feet and plays a short pass here to Kurt Zuma Zuma just taking his time, edge of the area for Declan Rice, who comes towards him. Rice's layoff finds Sofal. Sofal goes for a high, longer ball. Antonio uses his strength to barge into Milenkovic, then tries to get his way past him. Milenkovic wrestles him to the floor. The free kick, though, goes against Antonio, and Fiorentina take that quickly. And Antonio just lies flat on his back and thinks, how on earth didn't I get the decision? But West Ham have got some defending to do. Gonzalez lays off to Bonaventura. Bonaventura with his head up, looking for space. Run being made by Dodo on the right, Emerson reads it, slides in and knocks it out for a throw to Fiorentina Scott, yeah, got to be careful again, you know Fiorentina are passing side, but they're capable of they've got pace up front of counter-attack that was a really well-timed interception by Emerson there, but just down the other end I don't know why the referee's assistant gave a foul no. Milenkovic came out with it, the ball anyway Socek, up towards Antonio, just a little bit slow there Antonio didn't realise Ranieri was coming in from behind Fiorentina have it and now they're up to the edge of the West Ham box here's the danger man, Gonzalez Pass along the deck to Mandragora. Mandragora goes to his left and finds Biragi. Kuame, just on the corner of the West Ham area on the left. Biragi's ball is half blocked by Sofal. Sofal gets the rebound, knocks it into Biragi, and wins the throw in for West Ham. As tight as we expected this game to be, 18 minutes in, Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. An absolute joy if you're a neutral, watching or listening. I think an absolute horror if you're a West Ham fan or a Fiorentina fan trying to win that first major trophy for the first time in a very, very long time. For West Ham, they were playing in white on the day, of course. Trevor Brookings' header back in 1980 won them that FA Cup since then. A League Cup final defeat against Liverpool the following year. And a heartbreaking penalties defeat against Liverpool in the FA Cup in 2006. Fiorentina, last time they won a major trophy was 2001. And that was a Coppa Italia win. They lost in the Coppa Italia final a couple of weeks ago to Inter Milan, who you'll be hearing commentary on them on Saturday night on Five Live and BBC Sounds Champions League final uh, kicks off at 8 o'clock on air from 12 o'clock on Saturday with Steve Crossman and hours build up there then into the French Open tennis the women's final and then from 6.30 full build up to full commentary uh, with John Murray Chris Sutton and Jonathan Woodgate part of the uh, commentary team Fiorentina have possession here's Bonaventura goes wide to Biragi Bowen again comes sprinting across to close it down Biragi takes him in field and then just lays the ball back here to Ranieri Ranieri has Amrabat behind him 10 yards inside the West Ham half loose touch from Gonzalez Pakatar half committed to the challenge and didn't quite win it and the ball is spun back to the feet of Amrabat slides a clever little pass through to Bonaventura 
He goes through the middle to Kuwame. Kuwame looking for Jovic when he might have hit a shot. Ball's picking around. Might fall to Jovic here. Angles tight for him. Gets that shot in. That's blocked. And cleared away by Aguerd, who was in the right place at the right time for West Ham. Out of nothing, really. No, absolutely. I mean, first of all, it was a good challenge by Emerson, then by Aguerd, but got to get tighter to Amrabat. He's bossing it at the moment. And he's just playing those little passes in for the Fiorentina midfielders to turn and run at uh, the West Ham defence or, or even make the passes themselves which could then lead to a goal Mandragora up towards Kuwame the back heel doesn't come off so far is there Bowen is tripped off the ball by Kuwame and that's a free kick for West Ham looking at the Amrabat stats uh, Sky ahead of the game I think it's no goals no assists but he is absolutely vital isn't he in that midfield absolutely that's where stats do not tell the story Ali honestly he, he, he's the one who's controlling it and he's one of those players a bit like Declan Rice won't score many goals won't make many assists but he'll make the pass to make the assist yeah. to make the goal and it also what he'll do is he'll, he'll control the tempo of the match as well so he'll have it played how that his team and his manager wants it to be played not the opposition Jared Bowen jumps for a ball on the halfway line Duraghi says that's going to be a Fiorentina throw and I can see Vincenzo Italiano very promising young manager 45 year old second season in charge of Fiorentina tip for great things tip possibly actually to move on uh, this summer potentially but tonight just focusing on trying to win this trophy for, for Fiorentina That's what they're talking about Napoli aren't they, they are possibly. yeah Terracciano the goalkeeper goes to his left to Ranieri centre backs are split wide here for Fiorentina Terracciano is encouraged to come out of his penalty area lovely temperature this evening as well to, to play your football and watch your football it's been a warm day but it's cooling nicely little breeze rippling around the stadium uh, Bonaventura pops up again in space tries to get a ball forward intercepted Declan Rice suddenly closed down by Amrabat Amrabat still chasing Rice wide on the left for West Ham inside his own half Rice holds on to it didn't panic Gonzalez tackles him throwing West Ham and again I'll, I'll, I'll talk about how good Rice is without the ball but I'll talk about how good Amrabat is without the ball as well the way he pressed and he went from one to another and then Declan Rice you know, and then two players wanting him there they're so good without the ball as well as with it as well so it's difficult for West Ham to try and get any kind of rhythm in the game at the moment and sometimes they're just knocking a long ball up to Mikel Antonio have got two centre halves hanging off him so I just think the midfield of West Ham at the moment are, are losing out I don't think David Moyes would be worried at the moment but it, it's Fiontina who are controlling the tempo of the game at the moment those are the thoughts of the former West Ham defender Scott Minto with us on 5 Live in BBC Sounds free kick for West Ham up to the edge of the area headed away so foul lobs it forward sliding clearance from Ranieri offside flag now goes up so Fiorentina will get themselves a free kick the first time West Ham and Fiorentina have ever played each other in UEFA club competition they did meet each other once in the 1975 Anglo-Italian League Cup Scott if you remember that Fiorentina won both games by goal time I played in the one in the 90s yeah. not the one in the 70s <laughs> Milenkovic back to Terraciano Pakatar furthest forward for West Ham doing the closing down they're making him run they come back to the goalkeeper Terraciano and the bat on the edge of his own box lays it back to the goalkeeper again and he clips a ball up towards the halfway line Kuwame is challenged by Sofal last touch comes off the West Ham player according to the assistant referee so that will be a throw in for Fiorentina David Moyes has come up against Fiorentina before that was a painful one actually his Everton team lost on penalties in the last 16 of the UEFA Cup in 2007 and 2008 and I have heard members of that Everton team have been in touch this week with David Moyes and say could you please get revenge for all of us uh, for that defeat uh, that night David Moyes is described tonight as the biggest moment in his managerial career it's nil nil at the moment Emerson heads the ball away Ben Rahm a lovely first touch to bring that under control up towards Antonio tries to turn away from Milenkovic he wins the tackle Milenkovic has gone down holding his face Fiorentina have it Bonaventura plays to Mandragora there's Kuame. Kuame corner of the West Ham box just lays it off to Biragi Biragi high floated cross to the far post Jovic heads it back across goal good defending from Sofal to get it away shot from Dodo that's deflected by Socek might fall to Jovic he's going to let it bounce and go behind for a Fiorentina corner Scott why did he get it bounce ok it would have been a tight angle work possibility of a, a, a volley and if it connected right that would have been difficult for Ariola to have um, to have saved that but I actually thought there was a foul on Sufal 
he made the headed clearance and he was fouled after that the referee didn't see that one should have given it the old Van Basten there Luka Jovic from that angle I mean he was closer to goal but you're right Scott he could have hit it on the volley Mikhail Antonio at the moment in conversation with the referee Carlos Del Cerro Grande and I think Antonio is complaining that Milenkovic threw himself to the floor after a challenge claiming Antonio had caught him in the face so yet again there's a loose hand but Milenkovic goes down then quickly looks up sees Fiorentina have got the ball and gets up and I think Antonio's had enough of it basically he's coming over and saying have you got an eye on this you know please look after us out here again a couple of plastic pint glasses being thrown down towards Cristiano Duraghi the Fiorentina captain who's taking the corner from the right it's a waste of a good pint <laughs> I think it's been drunk and then thrown Scott, here's Biragi. Biragi's corner, that looks dangerous, and a header high over the bar from close range from Milenkovic. He was in good space, he was unmarked, he couldn't control the header. Absolutely, Mikel Antonio complaining about him just 30 seconds earlier, but that, that's half a chance, that. Again, a great ball whipped in. It's difficult for him because he's, he still hasn't, he's past the near post, so he's almost having to not just direct it, but use the pace off the cross as well. High tariff one to try and get in. But it is half a chance because he, he was free there. 20 minutes remaining in the first half. I can see Declan Rice is now continuing the conversation with the referee, Carlos Del Cerro Grande. So West Ham are just, just trying to make their point, get their point across about how they feel this game is being played at the moment. Antonio against Milenkovic. Gets past Milenkovic, sliding in on Antonio. Tries to keep going. No free no. kick given. So Antonio was brought down. Decided to pick himself up and try and keep the ball in. He, he was sure he was going to get a free kick if he didn't get the advantage. Let's have a look at the replay, Scott, because it, from here it didn't look like Milenkovic got the ball. Oh, but that's outrageous. It's ridiculous. I mean, he misses the ball completely. He brings Antonio down. And instead of doing what the Fiorentina players have been doing by rolling around and trying to get a yellow card, he gets up. He's not able to then retrieve it because it's gone out. The referee has to give a foul. Assistant referee is five yards from that, right under the assistant referee's nose. I... I for the life of me, I have no idea how that is not given as a free kick. Absolutely crazy. Small decision. David Moyes looked absolutely aghast. Zuma's ball forward right. Antonio's going to chase this one. <laughs> Luca Ranieri tries to block him. And if you try and block Mikhail Antonio at full speed, you're going to get clattered. And he did get a big shove in the back. Well, what I was just about to say just before that happened is Mikel Antonio just needs to be careful that he doesn't get angry. He stays. He has that channeled aggression, which... The two centre-halves are just about dealing with him, but they know they're in for a handful. Don't do anything silly. Mm. And definitely don't do anything silly where you end up getting a red card. Five Live and BBC Sounds, live in Prague tonight. Europa Conference League final. Antonio challenged by Ranieri. And this time the decision goes Antonio's way. He was bumped in the back there, but I'm sure the referee's feeling slightly guilty. He didn't get the other one, so West Ham get it. And they take it quickly, and Declan Rice is looking for Sofal in a bit of space on the right. And Sofal looks up. Now, can he find a decent cross? Lays it off to Bowen. Bowen up against Biragi. Bowen. Drops a shoulder, heads for the byline, cross comes in, Amrabat gets up, heads it up in the air, Terraciano, the goalkeeper, comes and then Sojic doesn't really jump, he pushes his body towards Terraciano and the goalkeeper does well to make the catch actually. Yeah, a few things there, first of all Mikel Antonio, the way he won that free kick, he just he felt the centre half, got his body there, the centre half made the foul, he went and went down, brilliant forward play, that's the channel aggression that I'm talking about. And then actually Jared Bowen again, one of the few times he's been able to really take on Biragi, who's great going forward and got a wonderful left foot but not the best of the defender and it's not as quick as Bowen decent ball in West Ham have to get numbers in in that position Fiorentina nil West Ham nil Amrabat ball out to the right touched on to Dodo by Gonzalez Dodo's instantly recognisable the Brazilian wears number two with the bright peroxide hair and the ball is beyond Gonzalez from Bonaventura there was a little bit of space to work there if he got the pass right but it's run away for a goal kick yeah it was overplayed wasn't it and you just get the feeling that at times if Fiorentina maybe step it up the tempo a little bit quicker and maybe even try the counter-attack themselves there are spaces in that West Ham back four so look Emerson I don't think he's the best of defenders I think he's there because of his athleticism but I still think sometimes he can be caught out of position so there was a chance there for Fiorentina goal kick for West Ham just over 15 minutes remaining in the first half of this European final Zuma heads away the bouncing ball flipped on Bowen stretches to try and control then looks to release Antonio, who's probably going to be offside. Fiorentina intercepted, long ball over the top of Zuma's head. Couple of bounces, awkward one for Ariola from Zuma. Controls it well on his thigh, clears it quickly with his right foot. And Antonio this time probably prefers the challenge against Amrabat. The ball is between both of their feet there. Antonio goes sliding in to try and take it off Bonaventura. Bonaventura 
to Milenkovic, goes back to the goalkeeper Terraciano, closed down by Takatar, plays out to Ranieri and here's Amrabat inside his own half. Diagonal ball, high in the air, not enough on that. Ben Rama comes back and follies it away and in attacking sense, not seen anything of Ben Rama. Pacatar has got to be stronger. He had two players around him, but if he if he wants it more, be more aggressive, he could have played Ben Rama in, who we've not seen a lot of yeah. in the last ten minutes. Emerson with an interception. Here's a chance for West Ham on the counter. Pacatar. Emerson continues his run, gets it from the Brazilian, looks up Emerson, almost down by the byline, fizzes in across. Milenkovic blocks. Here's Emerson. Cushions one back to Ben Rama. Ben Rama edge of the Fiorentina area. Good trick. Then goes flying over the legs of Bonaventura. And he's booked for diving. Saeed Ben Rama booked for diving. He was hoping that Bonaventura was going to stick the leg out and catch him. Bonaventura removed the leg. Ben Rama tried to win the free kick. And I've got no qualms with players being booked for diving if they're diving. Absolutely. And initially he was good skill as well. But, I mean, he has just got caught red-handed there, hasn't he? There was waiting for the contact. To be fair to the defender, he did well by, by not sticking his leg out. And Ben Rama could have just tried to carry on, maybe he overplayed it a little bit, but still, you're not getting the contact. Don't dive like that. Yeah. That's the point I'm making as well, Scott, about, you know, we talk about Fiorentina and some of the games in the ship, but that, that's, that's terrible. Really? That is dreadful. Got to call it as you see it, Absolutely. and that, that was poor from Ben Rama, deserved yellow card. Milenkovic, Fiorentina take their free kick. 14 minutes remaining in this first half. Tight game as we expected. So much riding on it for both of these clubs. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Who's going to come up with a moment of magic? Emerson's trying to do it now. Great run down the left. Step over and a nutmeg. Finds Ben Rama. Ben Rama plays it to Emerson again. Emerson, half tackled by Milenkovic. Still has it. Faces him up again. Two purple shirts right in front of him. And then passes the ball out of play. Or does he? Well... Fiorentina stopped playing as if to say that's a throw. The assistant referee Benitez didn't give a throw and then decided to agree with them. So that wasn't very decisive officialdom there. And again, West Ham are left shaking their heads. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Dodo with the throw. Milenkovic clears with his right foot. You can probably hear the chorus from the West Ham fans if you don't know what you're doing. Ringing around the Eden Arena. Here's Gonzalez. Managed to get past the challenge of Rice. Takes on Emerson. Beats Emerson. Sliding in now. It's again. Times the challenge really well. Wins the ball and it goes behind for a corner to West Ham. And they've got to stop throwing these plastic pint glasses. Gonzalez is sat down there. Five, six of them come towards him. He catches one of them. He starts to pick the rest of them up. I mean, I know, I know physically they, they're not going to hurt unless they catch you in the eye away. They've just got, they just got no, to stop doing it. It's poor, though, Ali. It really is. You know, the West Ham fans shouldn't be doing that. They don't need to do that. Um, but just, uh, and actually, well, I was going to say more important, but, but there's loads of them coming out. Yeah, important. Yeah, Firagi's being pelted. He applauds the West Ham fans sarcastically. That only brings more of them down. The referee's got to get a grip of this, and they've got to get a grip of this in the stands as well. And Firagi is now being marched away from the corner flag. And actually, I think the referee is saying, we are going to stop the game yeah. here until we sort this out. He looks like he's taking the players off towards the tunnel here at the moment. He's certainly taking Biragi away. Biragi has been caught by one on the head. And actually, I think he now needs treatment. So there's an example. They can hurt if they catch you. Maybe he's been cut. And this is a real shame, I have to say. Oh, it's, it's a bad one. Bad cut on the back of the head. Small cut, but blood is pouring down the back of his shaven head and onto his neck. It's just... It's poor. It's, uh, it's, it's not needed. It's... It's disgraceful, it really is. West Ham fans don't need to be doing this. Don't get involved in things in the pitch, just support your team. Declan Rice, I think, is apologising on behalf of the West Ham fans, possibly there. He's trying to have a word. Yeah, there's, there's one that comes from range there, catches Baragi on the back of the head. I can see his reaction as well, the sarcastic applause. He has no reaction there. No, 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 honestly, you know, he's getting half a dozen plastic bottles thrown onto the pitch and, and he's hitting his head and he's got, he's got blood gushing out of his head. Now, what, what do you expect him to do? It's, it's, it's poor. Yeah. And eventually you're going to get to a situation where people won't be able to have drinks in the stadium even out of a plastic cup if this kind of thing well on top of that this game could be called off oh. or at least delayed for not called off because I don't think UEFA would allow that but, but yeah. certainly delayed for a long period of time possibly it's one then for Declan Rice to get in front of those West Ham fans and just say look we've got this on the pitch I mean the disruption is going to help no one there's a corner to come for Fiorentina I can see one of the UEFA officials now is in conversation here with our referee 
Duragi is still retreat, uh, receiving treatment, getting stitches to the back of his head. The referee is coming back onto the field. And up on the big screen, attention please, an important security announcement. Stop throwing objects onto the pitch immediately. Please respect the players and the officials. Thank you. And it's come from the West Ham fans away to our right, not the Fiorentina fans uh, away to our left. And it's... Um, it's not been good, not been good to see, really, really disappointing. Now again, we, we, we just want to talk about football. We don't want to be talking about these type of things. And Baragi now is getting the, his head ta taped up. You know, that, that looked a nasty cut, the blood, yeah. blood was pouring out. Yeah. Well, it absolutely proved my point wrong in a sense that, you know, the damage they can do. It's, it's a light plastic cut, but it's caught, it's caught him. And it's, I'll tell you the one thing, I mean, that was slightly lighter now. The thing I do love is that the bandages for Fiorentina aren't bright white. They're bright purple. Yeah, it, it goes to the kit. Yeah. Well, and I was telling you, Scott, the lovely story that I read that I hope is true, but it might be urban myth about why Fiorentina play in this really distinctive colour. Apparently back in the 1920s, there was a mix-up in the wash. They used to wear red, white and black. It all got mixed up and blurred. They came out in purple for the next game because it ran in the wash the fans loved it and it's stuck ever since that happens to me all the time <laughs> 10 minutes remaining in the first half let's hope that nonsense stops now and let's hope we can enjoy this Europa Conference League final Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Diragi is back he's bandaged up he's OK the referee's blown his whistle and I think we're about to get back underway corner for Fiorentina there was danger from the last one here's Biragi with his left foot low one into the near post Pakatar sticks a leg out the ball goes straight up in the air Antonio jumps but misses the header gets a second go on the bounce hook back in by Ranieri just beyond Jovic and into the arms of Ariola. I'll tell you what that was a good hook back and if Jovic had read the situation then he, he basically would have had a one on one with Ariola. so the game needs to rediscover a little bit of rhythm last 10 minutes of this first half the announcement continues around the stadium it's gone up in Italian up on the big screens as well although as I say I suppose what they're worried about actually is that the Fiorentina fans at the other end might respond in kind and actually we just need to cut it out full stop throwing from Fiorentina uh, on the right but fortunately that wording's disappeared so I don't have to read it out in Italian as well as English I couldn't even read it in English your, okay. your eyesight's really good Amrabat on the ball for Fiorentina inside his own half glides away from Pakatar West Ham's midfielders and defenders retreating Kuwama wriggles away from Bowen curling cross in Get away from the edge of the area by Aguerd Bowen challenges Kuame there goes down West Ham this time get the free kick just inside their own half to a massive roar from the West Ham fans Fiorentina nil West Ham nil I keep saying it Scott but exactly as we expected this, this game to be yeah, we, we thought it would be tight it certainly has been you know it's been a bit bitty at times and certainly with the stoppage there is it just get back to the football and try and see who the best team is West Ham free kick they go diagonally long left Ben Rama back pedalling can't keep the header in play so Fiorentina get a throw Dodo has Bonaventura running towards it Bonaventura wants it slaps his chest angrily says give it to me doesn't get it gets it a third time and this time he does re receive it plays it back to Dodo Dodo lofts one high down the middle of the field Aguerd will deal with that very easily Gonzalez falls heavily but picks himself up after winning the head of Pakatar challenged by Amrabat he is a proper busy boy in that midfield is brilliant he? Uh, brilliant you know I think Declan Rice is bordering on world class but at the moment it's Amrabat who's just controlling this and with and without the ball I thought that was excellent the way he pressured Barcelona have been linked with Amrabat actually third season at Fiorentina having joined from Club Bruges had that fabulous World Cup with Morocco Milenkovic clears Emerson doesn't get enough on the header Gonzalez gets away from him shoved over by Emerson free kick for Fiorentina is getting scrappy and, and bitty we're getting sort of three or four passes then it breaks up then it goes long and it goes out of play for a, for a restart and just needs to get going again this game here's Ranieri rolls the ball under his left boot a couple of times trying to draw Antonio in Antonio's not coming towards him so he goes across to Milenkovic and back it comes to Ranieri no relation to Claudio I believe former manager of Fiorentina of course amongst many other clubs Claudio Ranieri the famous team of theirs Fiorentina back in the mid 90s late 90s Gabriel Battistuta Rui Costa just picture of him in the programme isn't it oh, what, well, as you, you, what, did, what was the word you used to describe it? well it, 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 it's clearly sort of jumped up and his hair's come out and he, he looked like a lion. lion he was he absolutely was he was a lion 
There's Gonzalez playing the ball back here to Ranieri. Ranieri picks up the pace, comes up towards the halfway line, and there's the reliable figure of Amrabat who calls for it alongside. Rolls his pass to Milenkovic. Milenkovic's ball forward to Mandragora. Chests it down under pressure from Bowen. Plays back to Ranieri again. So West Ham at the moment sitting deep, trying to strike on the counter. Fiorentina with all the possession. Here's West Ham's chance. Ball up to Antonio. Rolls the defender. Plays across to Pacatar. Pacatar has support from Declan Rice if he wants it. Goes the other way with a little back heel to himself. Just inside the Fiorentina half in a central position. Then curls the ball onto the right boot of Ben Rama. Ben Rama's got Dodo back pedaling. Little step over. I think he's overhit that down to the bottom. No, Dodo got the touch apparently. Corner for West Ham. Dodo doesn't agree. Well, my first instinct is that uh, West Ham have got a little bit lucky there. But that's what you want to see. Ben Rama getting himself in a one-on-one situation with Dodo. Tries to stand him up. Does a little step over. And it's Ben Rama who does kick the ball out. Was it? Yeah. I've just seen one glass, one plastic pint pot chucked to Emerson. He doesn't react and he just kicks the ball away. West Ham corner. I think they're first actually in this first half. Emerson with his left foot and away swing a good delivery. Great ball. Yeah. What a ball. Headed away by Milenkovic over his own crossbar who was under pressure from Zuma but Zuma did the sensible thing. Didn't foul him. Just wanted Milenkovic to hopefully make the mistake which he didn't. Yeah brilliant ball. It really was and it was you know the keeper can't come out. Then you're relying on the defenders and he's certainly good defending there. Late pressure from West Ham in this first half. Nil-nil. Emerson's corner deeper this time. That hits Zuma's hand in the box. Play continues. Rice hits a shot that is blocked. The ball spins away. Ben Rama can't control it. Fiorentina trying to bring it away. Bonaventura tackled by Ben Rama inside his own half. Emerson on the ball again. Emerson with a gliding run. Challenge comes in on him from Kuame. That looked rash. Free kick for West Ham. Now is that in shooting range? I would say that was just under 30 yards out. Ali, you've got a great strike in you if you think you can score from there. <laughs> I've seen others do it. So well, it's yeah. Fun, so. I, I, I mean, what I would like to say is Emerson, to be fair, actually was a really good run. And was there a possible handball? And yeah, yes. well, there was. And we spotted it, didn't we? Zuma, as he jumped, the ball hit his hand. And it wasn't given for Fiorentina as a free kick. Players continue. Now, obviously, video assistant referee can't look at that. We've got a set piece. That's going to restart the game. Fiorentina are going to be absolutely fuming if this ends up in the back of their net because it has come from the fact that they should have had a free kick and been able to clear the ball. So that is one that's gone West Ham's way. Absolutely not. I think it's one of those where he could have a strike and even if he doesn't score, as long as he you know, kind of bounces in front of the keeper and he's not able to hold it and people follow in or you just try and whip it round the wall or the sort of line of the defenders and hope that one of your West Ham attackers can get on the end of it. 0-2-0, West Ham nearly. It is getting touchy as well. Every decision getting contested in that one as well. Fiorentina complaining. West Ham players moved in. Lots of eyeball to eyeball, nose to nose. Ben Rama. West Ham fans want him to hit it, but it's going to be Emerson who's going to curl one in towards the far post. Headed away. Amrabat underneath the clearance. That might fall the Pacatar. Edge of the box. A rash of purple shirts come flooding towards him. He lays it off to Sofal. Sofal gets the cross in deep. Not it down. By Socek, but not into the path of Bowen. He was there. Unmarked. Edge of the six-yard box. Had he got that on target to him he would have had a great great chance to score yeah so checks free at the far post and he should be able to see there he's headed it back too far back to Bowen you know he's got to be able to see where Bowen is he wouldn't have been able to make that because he headed it back so far Ben Rama's ball in field read by Milenkovic and cleared into the West Ham half Fiorentina reset themselves Declan Rice goes jogging back into his half we've got about 90 seconds remaining of normal time in the first half but after the stoppage uh, for the injury to Biragi and the announcement that had to be made to tell the West Ham fans to stop throwing those plastic glasses onto the field. We are going to get a bit of added time at the end of this first half. And Scott Minto sitting alongside me thinks we could be going all the way tonight to a penalty shootout. So it's going to be a long evening. Well, I'll tell you what, I haven't seen anything to change my mind as yet. No, you're absolutely right. Ariola's just outside his penalty area, drills it forward with his right foot. Pacatar tries to jump, the ball's beyond him. Ben Rama can't get there. Dodo just lays it back to his goalkeeper, Tepiciano. You do get the feeling though, don't you? This could be one of those games where just one bit of brilliance, hopefully not a mistake, but, but one, even a set piece, could be the difference. Because we said it before the game, we were 44 minutes in, we did probably think we'll get a lot of injury time yeah. uh, before the, the teams actually go in. But at the moment, it is very equal. 
West Ham feeling hard done by again. Emerson penalised for a challenge into the back of Gonzalez. I mean, that is a foul. He's waiting for a ball to come down out of the sky. Just barges in his back and knocks him over. So, referee's got that one spot on. Red one, one shot on target. And that's actually come from West Ham. So, while Fiorentino, I think, have been the better side, yeah. more in control, you know, they've had, what, 65% possession. They haven't had a shot on target yet. No, that's a very good point. Similar to Altmar, actually, in the semi-final against West Ham. Lots and lots of the ball, but not really threatening Harry Ola in goal. Did score one goal in the first leg at the London Stadium. Ball is laid back by Bonaventura. Hammerbach takes his time, finds Kuame. Did a skill from the Ivorian there, and then too much on the pass away to the left. And that's a shame for Fiorentina, because Biragi was in real space there. Could have controlled it and whipped in a great ball. Four minutes of added time at the end of a, a rather bitty, scrappy first half in this Europa Conference League final. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. The surprise is only four. Yeah, more than that. Definitely. I think there has been more than that, actually. Here's Milenkovic. Milenkovic out to Gonzalez. First time ball. Bonaventura in the penalty area. Chips the ball up to the far post. So foul underneath it. Heads it away along the byline. Kuame gets there first. Bowen steps in with the challenge back to Biragi cross deflected up in the air it goes awkward for Ariola. jumps and catches it well edge of his six yard box and falls to the floor and now so foul is down I wonder if that cross actually at pace might have caught him in the head and has, has knocked him for six potentially yeah, it has it's come off his head and you can see as soon as the cross came in he put his hand to his head and he's gone down and he's still not quite able to get back up so another stoppage added time at the end of the first half so far actually is saying I'm okay the West Ham medical staff are about to get on the field but the referee has waved them away so far's all right big night and really big night as well Scott for so far and Socek isn't it back here you know I know at the start of the season Thomas Socek said to us this week he'd said to his teammates the finals in Prague we've got to get there both of them you know, used to play in this stadium. Heroes here in their home country. So, just an extra special little bit on it for both of them for, for West Ham tonight. And Antonin Barak on the bench for Fiorentina uh, is another who used to play here briefly as well and scored the late, late goal in extra time, actually, that took Fiorentina through to this final. Otherwise, they were heading towards a penalty shootout against Basel. Yeah, and I, I can tell you from personal experience, when you play against your old Cubs, look, you give it 100% in every game, but let's just say you give it 101%. Mm. Uh, you know, we're, we're either against your old club or you're coming back home, as it were, yeah. like, like, like Suchek and Sufala here in Prague. Two minutes remaining in the first half. That's the former West Ham defender Scott Minto here in the Eden Arena. Five live and BBC Sounds. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Dodo plays in field to Bonaventura. Midway inside the West Ham half. Declan Rice is there blocking his path. Bonaventura across to Mandragora. Mandragora curling pass back to Amrabat. He's in a central position, 45 yards out. Low ball to his right, finds Gonzalez through the legs of Emerson. It might run to Dodo, intercepted by Ben Rama, but he got the last touch, and that goes behind for a corner to Fiorentina. Now, we've been talking about Piragi, Scott. His delivery from this right-hand side is dangerous with that left foot, isn't it? We've seen already a couple of times, and we know how many assists he's made all season. Very, very good in the set piece. So what are we on? 48 minutes, maybe another two more minutes. Yeah. Got to keep a clean sheet up to half-time now. West Ham have got a switch on here. Pakatar defending the near post. One of the West Ham defenders there. Ben Rama on the corner of the six-yard box. West Ham in his white shirts with the orange splash at the bottom of the shirt. This time Diragi goes short to Amrabat. Corner of the box. His cross comes in. Deflected header. Declan Rice is there and happy just to hook it away on the volley. Throwing for Fiorentina. Bit of a waste, I thought. We're just talking about Baragi and his left foot. We've seen him already whip some great balls in. OK, yes, Amrabat is the guy who's absolutely dictating not just Fiorentina going forward, but the pace of this game. But no, just tell him to go away. Whip it in the box right before half-time and you never know what can happen. My stopwatch tells me 30 seconds remaining in the first half of this Europa Conference League final. And as has been the case, Fiorentina have the ball in the closing stages here and West Ham are in their defensive shape. Amrabat just inside his own half. Forward to Jovic. Jovic comes deep to lay it off to Milenkovic. Milenkovic opens his body up and slides one to the right to Gonzalez. Gonzalez scuttles away from Ben Rama, crosses him with his left foot. Kawame with the header, or strikes the outside of the post. Jovic with the diving header on the rebound, gets it in. A hammer blow for the hammers, but the offside flag is up. They can breathe a massive sigh of relief. 
It will be checked by the video assistant referee. It was Kuame's header. Ariola went scrambling across his line. It came back, I think, off a combination of him and the post. Jovic was there, like any good striker should be, dived in. And Ariola was trying to scramble the ball away. Kuame's not offside from the original one. And actually, from the rebound, that is going to be tight. It is whether Aguerd is playing Jovic onside. That is going to need to be checked. Well, I've got a feeling that that was a superb decision by the referee's assistant and we'll see Jovic just about offside I mean first of all great ball in but Ariola's got to do better than there on both the attempts first of all on that initial header and then secondly keeping the ball away from the line real drama right at the end of this first half Vincenzo Italiano is over to the assistant referee saying what's happening what's happening we know what's happening it's up on the big screen VAR goal check it says checking offside leading up to goal David Moyes keeping his cool, getting his players around him on the touchline. It's a massive moment. It's a massive moment in this game, in what we said would be a tight game just before half-time. Massive moment. The fact it's taking this long as well, we don't have the images that the video assistant referee is looking at, tells me that it's a tight one, and they're looking at it again and again and again. It's Aguerd, Jovic is alongside him, it's going to be very tight. Jovic reacted brilliantly, actually, just to get some part of his body on that. He's actually down hurt. I think he got caught as he went for the diving header. He's wondering if he scored the goal to put Fiorentina in front. The referee's arm is up in the air. And I think check over, no goal. That was a very, very close one for West Ham right at the end of the first half. Scott Minto. And I tell you what, that's not a clean sheet by design, that's by luck. There's no way they were playing offside there. Really good decision, and VAI, even if referee's assistant would have got it wrong, VAI would have overruled that. But that's one, one, a good decision, but two, to say West Ham have got away with that one now. Half-time whistle blows, strange first half, late drama, Jovic's goal ruled out for a very marginal offside. Fiorentina have had more of the ball. We had a stoppage in play as well with all the plastic pint glasses that were being thrown towards Biragi by the West Ham fans. Hopefully no more of that to come. We knew it was going to be tight. It's been very cagey. It's been pretty tetchy as well. It's on a knife edge at half-time here in Prague. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Thank you, Mark. Teams are back out. Luka Jovic is coming off at half-time. Artur Cabral, the Brazilian centre-forward, who's been the regular starter in recent weeks, replaces him up front. As Jovic went for the diving header when he thought he'd scored to give Fiorentina the lead just before half-time, I think he did take a bit of a whack to the head, so that might be something to do with that. Second half's about to get underway. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Tactically, Scott Minto, what do you think West Ham need to do in this second half to improve this performance? Well, there's two things for me. Ali, first of all, they, they must beat the physical Fiorentina press better. They must deal with it better. They're not able to at the moment. The likes of Pakatar and Ben Rama, even Thomas Suchek, not getting involved, not handling the physicality in the way that they do press. And then also, they've just got to get someone on Amrabat. He ran the show in the first half. Let the two centre-halves have it and just get someone close to Amrabat so he doesn't start their attacks. Right, surprise, surprise. The second half will start with a free kick for Fiorentina. We've kicked off, long ball forward from West Ham. Socek jumps, catches Ranieri in mid-air. His sort of forearm goes into Ranieri's lower back and Ranieri is down seeming to be in some pain so Fiorentina are going to get themselves a free kick and again we don't want that sort of stop start nature in the in the second half it's yeah and to be, fair, very to, to be fair to the referee saying get up yeah I'm not allowing the, the physios on get up West Ham Alphonse Ariola in goal so foul Zuma Aguerd and Emerson Emerson in for Cresswell in the starting lineup uh, tonight Socek and Rice in front of that back four Bowen Pakatar Ben Rama on the yellow card caught out for diving caught red-handed in the first half trying to win a free kick on the edge of the box and Mikhail Antonio playing through the middle West Ham in change kick tonight the white shirts with the orange splash at the bottom defending to do defending the goal away to our left here's Emerson on the ball inside his own half but he's lost it to Gonzalez Dodo makes a little run on the outside just outside the box cross comes into the far post loads of players jumping for it clears all of them Mandragora puts another ball back into the far post that's headed away Bonaventura stretches little flick header from him goes backwards and Ranieri plays it to uh, Biragi on the left-hand side. The Fiorentina captain, whose head is now swayed in a bright purple bandage to match his Fiorentina kit, having been caught by that plastic pint glass as he was waiting to take a corner in the first half. I'll give you the Fiorentina starting lineup 
uh, in just a second, but we're a couple of minutes into the second half. Two teams playing for a much sought-after trophy. From their point of view, been a long time since either club has won a major trophy. It's up for grabs this evening. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. And Amrabat, the man who's running the show, on the ball for Fiorentina. Bonaventura, pace on that cross into the far post. Chest it down by Kwame. Gets away from him. So far, clears first time. And it goes out for a throw to Fiorentina. Poor touch from Kwame there, because Zufal had to come in. And that meant he could have had a decent first touch and maybe even a shot at goal. Measured pass from Socek on the volley. Pakatai, it's a handball from Amrabat. Well, that's not spotted. Referee said he hit his leg. I don't think it did. Bonaventura central position 30 yards out slide pass to his right Dodo takes a touch got to be careful with the challenges there Declan Rice was careful tiptoed in and very gently just stole the ball away plays it to Antonio Antonio going on one of those block busting runs now was he caught there he's gone down looking for a free kick the referee saying yes it was a free kick so West Ham will get that decision let's give you this Fiorentina team quickly uh, Pietro Terracciano in goal Dodo, Milenkovic, Ranieri, Biraghi, uh, the back four for Fiorentina. 4 3 3, Bonaventura, Amrabat, and Mandragora as the midfield three, and Artur Cabral, the Brazilian, uh, with Nicolas Gonzalez and Christian Kawame either side of him. Cabral has come on for Jovic at half time. If you have just tuned in to Five Live and BBC Sounds, and I hope you're going to be with us again uh, for the next few nights uh, as well. Special Euro League show looking ahead to the Champions League final uh, tomorrow night. For 7.30 then a show from half eight on five live how Pep Guardiola changed football big discussion on that Friday Football Social comes live from Istanbul on Friday night two hour build up to that Champions League final full commentary of the game Manchester City going for the historic treble against Inter Milan oh Bowen's gone down took a knock to the head in the penalty area play continues space here for a Gerd and the shot's deflected from Ben Rama to the far post and goes looping beyond that far post and behind for a corner now Bowen was definitely caught in the head in the penalty area accidentally obviously he's up now and rubbing the back of his head West Ham just wondering whether there should have been a penalty Biragi sort of just pushes his elbow into the back of his head we've only seen one angle so far and it didn't look like it was a penalty his arm does come up and he does catch him but it's not enough it's not enough to to get him to go down and, and win a penalty definitely caught and I think that's probably sore but as you say Scott Minto no penalty now no plastic pint glasses being thrown in the second half away to our right hang on VAR check for a potential penalties come up on the screen but the referee seems to be getting the game back underway so that's already been done Bowen's corner in towards the near post header from Cabral who's back there glancing header across his own box and it goes out for a throw into West Ham wide on the left so they were looking at it briefly but obviously decided no penalty and I think as you say Scott that was the uh, the right call now I think as well Ali sorry I was just going to say in a game like this in a European final it has to be pretty much nailed on yeah yeah totally agree David Moyes bellowing some instructions down to Mikhail Antonio. Long run from him and long, high, looping throw. Terracciano comes miles off his line to collect that. Does really well. Stumbles forward as he does so, all in red. The Fiorentina goalkeeper, short sleeve top this evening. Bowls it out to Amrabat. Slightly awkward first touch from him. Pacatago's chasing. Now what's happened here? We've got a Fiorentina player down. Is that Gonzalez down? Wide on the right. So Ranieri's not the ball straight out of play. Now... I have no idea what happened to Gonzalez. He must have run into a West Ham player off the ball. Ben Rama's chasing. And uh, Gonzalez has run into his right arm. And again, yes, he's been caught. But he's OK. He's going to pick himself up. And we're back underway. But it's, uh, unfortunately, it's the, it's the same pattern in the second half. The game's not getting going. No, it's not. But Ben Rama just has to be careful. He's on a yellow card. You know, defensively, I don't think he's been great. And he hasn't really got on the ball too much in the first half. You get your arm up like that. If you do catch him, you just, you just never know. It's in the hands of the referee. Correct decision this time. Just make sure you don't do it again. Six minutes gone in the second half. There was discussion, certainly amongst the West Ham fans I spoke to yesterday, last night, about whether Thor Nows might start ahead of Ben Rama. So that could possibly be an early change for West Ham here. A couple of West Ham fans at half-time actually were standing next to, taking a comfort break uh, alongside me, discussing the first half with each other. Uh, it can't be any worse than that. Uh, said one of them and I remember actually first leg of the uh, semi-final at home against Altmar West Ham were really poor in that first half and picked it up in the second half they were 1-0 down and turned it around but they need something here 
Um, you know, it, it's about winning the game, but if you look at the Altmar game over the, both the legs, I think in terms of pure footballing performance, I think West Ham weren't the better side, yeah. but they found the way to win, and it may be one of those where they have to do the same here. Amrabat takes the ball off his goalkeeper, Antonio nearly nicks it off him, Amrabat turns, plays it back to the keeper, Terraciano, longer ball with his right foot, Gonzalez jumps, real clash of bodies in the air, Aguerd went for it. Gonzalez went for it, both players had eyes for the ball, Gonzalez has been caught high up on his chest, Aguerd is hurt as well, another stoppage in play, hopefully both of these players are going to be okay, and the referee's got a yellow card out as well for the challenge by Aguerd, so was it a slightly reckless leap from Aguerd, could he really seriously think he was, he was going to win that ball? Well, Gonzalez is kind of rolling around, and if his neck is that sore, then you would think of making sure it stay pretty straight. Now, I'd, I need to see a replay of it again. It did look like one of those where both those, both the players really went for it, and you can see why it would be painful off the back of it. But did it deserve a yellow card? I'm still waiting on the replay. Um, Scott, I know you you commentated on the uh, the Europa League final last week, and you're having a crack at this one tonight as well. I mean, you, you're going, what, what are you saying about the, the luck that I'm bringing to you're the European going, finals? No, I was, you're going through the mill at the moment. This this really needs to uh, to liven up. And I, I know there's always a tension with this because it's such an important game for both clubs. Gonzalez got up first there in the challenge and higher. Again, was in on him slightly late. I just think sorry, no, absolutely. I think it's one of those where you've got two guys going for it and, and sort of leaning towards both arms are up I don't think that you can go, you can go a foul either way to be honest with you and okay West Ham can see the foul I don't, for me that's not a yellow card great noise inside the stadium again as we wait for this free kick to be taken it's a sort of clash of bubbles you can hear I'm forever blowing bubbles away to our right and then a kind of rhythmical thunderclap not one of those that gets slower and quicker and quicker but that's from the Fiorentina fans accompanied by the singing away to the left with that rhythmic bass of the drum beat as well just accompanying everything along the way eight and a half minutes gone in the second half absolutely nothing has happened in, in the second half so far other than Fiorentina making the change Cabral coming on for Jovic at the start of the second half. Let's get this game going. Fiorentina take the free kick. Bonaventura plays it back to Amrabat. Why to Biragi? Wants to get an lead across in. That's brilliant defending from Jared Bowen. Cut the space down and blocks it with his right foot. Throw in for Fiorentina. Biragi takes it. Throws it back into his own half to Ranieri. Amrabat between the two centre backs wants to take control. Draws Paqueta in. Across to Milenkovic. Dodo hugging the touchline wide on the right. Ben Rama's back to face him up. Dodo's beaten him on the outside but then doesn't go for the cross. Cuts back. And lays it back here to Bonaventura. He's the kind of player I think is sometimes really underestimated. Pops up in all sorts of space. One of those who actually doesn't even particularly look like a, he's going to be a brilliant footballer but he's so dangerous yeah he Good plays team. that kind of one-two touch at times doesn't he where he, he doesn't always have the ball but he, he keeps passing it on and moving it and, yeah. and then giving his team the ability to, to really attack the, the opposition defence Innocent's header away Dodo's onto the ball on the halfway line pokes it back into his own half Giragi plays back to Ranieri Ranieri looking for an option obviously that is Amrabat because he's always there Amrabat gives it straight back to Ranieri who stops so West Ham's front three in a line they hold off the press now Pakatar moves forward to Terraciano the goalkeeper clears with his right foot away to Gonzalez who's up early falls over Emerson goes down no free kick and the ball's gone out for a West Ham throw in their half on the left ten minutes gone in the second half Fiorentina nil West Ham nil not going down as a as a classic European final so far. I think would be a slight understatement. Uh, Antonio back in into Dodo. He's fouled, and that is a free kick for West Ham. No, but still, I mean, nothing's happened in the second half. But and, and David Moyes might be thinking, do you know what? We're we're okay with that. We'll try and get it later and later at nil nil. But I think that's a dangerous way to do it. I think you need to get the the you know the, the star players like the Pakatar, like the Ben Ramas, like the Jared Bowens involved. Thomas Suchek, you know, he's trying to. Do a job but he's not really doing anything it's almost like I'm sure David Moyes is thinking now when do I make substitutions so that was ball forward good flick on from Antonio Jared Bowen tries to get on the end of it just a little bit too much into the arms of the keeper and even there it's just a, it's a long hopeful ball to Mikel Antonio who's got a centre half right up his backside he's got another centre half just within a few yards of him as well how was he meant to bring that down yeah Aguerre did get booked, by the way, just to confirm that. So Aguerre and Ben Rama, the two players on bookings for West Ham. Mandragora 
Danger for West Ham here, he's got away on the left, back to goal, lays it off to Cabral, the centre forward, who'd probably rather be in the middle, plays it to Kawame, curling shot straight at Ariola, deals with that expertly, bouncing ball in front of him on the half body, just falls on top of it, and grabs it with both hands. Yeah, stats so far in the game, Fiorentina with all this possession, almost up to 70% now, but no shots on target, that's the first one, and West Ham with their shot on target, the one shot came in the first minute of the game from Antonio, didn't it, which Ted Chiano saved quite comfortably. And that has been, that really, apart from obviously Jovic's uh, header that crossed the goal line that was ruled out for offside at the end of the first half. Ball is loose inside the Fiorentina half wide on the left. Socek throws himself in the way of it. Clever from Pakatar. Amrabat immediately senses the danger. It's a right old hustle and tussle of bodies and legs and boots and everything. Pakatar goes down and actually wins a throw in for West Ham. Quite literally putting his body on the line. Picks himself up off that touch line. And Sofal is stealing yard after yard down the right. That's a really good long throw, though. Bowen chests it down, and now he's appealing for handball against Biragi. Jared Bowen wants that check. He is absolutely adamant that that ball, after he controlled it, hit Cristiano Biragi's arm. It will be looked at. Play continues, and we'll have a look when we get it on our replay monitor. Fiorentina nil, West Ham nil. Cleared by Teleciano, the Fiorentina keeper, headed away by Aguerd, and that will be a throw in. Fiorentina inside their own half on the right so yeah here we go VAR potential penalty check and a couple of the Fiorentina players actually look slightly concerned by this one because as we know particularly in the European competition sometimes things that aren't given as penalties in the Premier League do get given here it comes Scott tell me what you see Bowen Chessick down oh Duraghi's hand is out away from his body and it flicks his knuckles doesn't it now he's not trying to handball that or, but is his arm in a natural position because he's running like that? Th that's what I would think. His arm is definitely out, and, and he got caught with Jared Bowen in behind him. But I, I, I would say that's a natural running motion. But his arm was definitely out, and it definitely hit the arm. It's a similar contact of ball on hand as the one that hit Jack Grealish's hand in the FA Cup final. But there Grealish was leaping. His arm was away from his body. And I'll tell you what, this might be a penalty for West Ham because the referee has drawn the lines of the rectangle to indicate that he is going over to the screen to have a look at this. The Fiorentina players have got to back away from him. It's on the far side of the field to us, but he is going to have a look. Jared Bowen chesting the ball down. He's got a freeze frame at the moment. Now the images are moving, and Biragi is running towards him and accidentally catches the ball with his right hand. Look, I, I tell you what, the fact that he's been told to go over, I think he will overturn this. And actually, you can look at it and say, OK, yes, he's running, and his right arm naturally moves forward, but it literally moves forward into the ball. So I would not be surprised now. The referee's looked at five, six, seven replays of it I think he will make sure that uh, I think he'll say it's a penalty as you said Scott he absolutely has to be sure in a game of this magnitude he's looking at seven eight replays at the moment he's like a statue and the entire set of both players behind him he's changing his mind he's overturning it's a penalty for West Ham and the end to our right explodes with noise because now there is a chance for West Ham to take the lead and try and set themselves on the path to glory Jared Bowen at the moment is jogging away towards the right towards the West Ham fans encouraging them for more support Saeed Ben Rama has not done too much this evening surely he's going to be the man to take it cool as you like from the spot so far for West Ham this season scored a really important one in the first leg of the uh, semi-final against AZ Altmar and yes Scott he's the man ball in hands this is a real Real good break for West Ham. They're making a change as well because I can see Kurt Zuma is going to play no further part in this game. He's being replaced by Tilo Kera. Fiorentina continue to complain about the decision. Nothing they can do about it now. I think you'd feel really hard done by that this was given against you. But it is a penalty for West Ham. What a chance. Yeah, absolutely. And, and looking at it again, look, he, he's running, so his right arm has to come out. But at the same time, it literally goes towards the ball. I can understand why it is overturned. If, if I'm Baragi, I'm, I'm thinking, no, that, that, that's really unfair. But I can understand why it's overturned. Now it's a mental game for Ben Benrahmo. He's not been great offensively or defensively, but he can make the name for himself here. Wall of claret and blue behind the goal away to our right. Ben Benrahmo with his hands on his hips. He's just staring at the ball. He refuses to look at the goalkeeper, Pietro Terracciano. I can't 
cannot imagine he will have taken a more important penalty than this in his footballing career. West Ham haven't won a European trophy for 58 years. Here's a chance to go in front. Ben Rama, what a penalty! Into the top corner there in front. Ben Rama sends the goalkeeper the wrong way. Goes racing away to celebrate with the West Ham fans who are in absolute ecstasy all around the Eden Arena. A gift for West Ham that is season overturned by the referee having been called to the screen by the VAR. But that is some penalty to take in a European final. He waited, he paused, he ran towards it and then slotted it right into the top corner. Fiorentina nil, West Ham won. Is that going to be the glorious goal that sends them on their way to a European trophy? I'll tell you what, the way the first 60 minutes have gone, you would think so, but you would also know that Fiorentina will really go for it in this last half an hour. But what about the, the composure of Saeed Ben Rama, who's not had a great game so far, but step up with the penalty. And boy, what a good penalty that was. Keeper goes one way, his shot goes the other. And he could make himself an absolute West Ham legend. Well, Scott, you go all the way back. I mean, I was reading all the reports of the final in 1965. West Ham winning the Cup Winners' Cup. Alan Seeley was the man who scored the two goals for West Ham. It wasn't the likes of Martin Peters or Jeff Hurst. It was Alan Seeley, whose name were in the history books. Fantastic reaction from David Moyes, punching the air in delight. We've seen a replay of that as well. And tonight, it is Saeed Ben Rama's name who goes down as the West Ham goal scorer. For what's been a pretty poor game of football so far. West Ham have got the decision, though. It's gone their way, and now they're in front. And let's see how they manage it from here. 27 minutes of normal time, plus added time to come. Fiorentina nil, West Ham one. Scott Mintz. Wow, we talked about in the semi-finals how West Ham perhaps weren't the better on the side in the two legs and yet found a way to win. Can they do it this way? You can't just sit back, although it's not even as if they've been attacking the first 60 minutes anyway, but they can't just sit back and say, right, we'll try and you know keep that clean sheet because bringing that on will make things really nervy and they will have some chances for Fiorentina. They have to be proactive. Amrabat's dived in with a rash challenge on Jared Bowen, so suddenly West Ham do feel in control. Fiorentina fans, to their credit, making a lot of noise, trying to get their side back into this game. West Ham playing in this first major European final for 47 years, trying to win that first major European trophy for 58 years. Noses in front, Ben Ramos crossing, good ball towards the edge of the six-yard box, headed away, again was threatening, Pakatar lays it back to Declan Rice. Unbeaten in this competition so far this season, West Ham, 13 wins and one draw on their way at the moment to another win, a win that promises so much and will bring them everything and will mean a massive, massive party for West Ham fans in Prague this evening and across the globe wherever you're listening to us on Five Live and BBC Sounds. That noise is the West Ham fans singing their hearts out. I can see little bubbles. Someone's brought the bubbles in and they're floating across the stands as well. Long way to go still. The West Ham lead this final by a goal to nil. David Moyes, over a thousand games as a manager in club football. Antonio with a flip on, looking for Bowen. Offside flag is up against him. Fiorentina will have a chance to clear. He was the manager of Everton in the FA Cup final in 2009. Luis Sahar scored in the first minute. They were beaten by Chelsea. Uh, he won the, the third tier with Preston. Uh, all the way back at the start of the 2000s. Here's a ball down the right for Gonzalez. David for West Ham here. The cutback Cabral, really good block there. Tilo Kera on as a sub, makes the block from the shot, and that was absolutely crucial. Yellow card for one of the Fiorentina players. Mandragora gets booked here for his complaints about the decision. And West Ham have cleared the ball. It'll be a Fiorentina throw. Expect all sorts from this point on, I think, yeah, Scott. Yeah, absolutely. The gloves are off now, aren't they? And Fiorentina have to go for it. They counter-attack really well. And to be fair to, to Kera, he got him, he's got his body positioned in the right place. So the ball kind of hit him. And you can see that Mandragara was complaining that was handball. No way he's not handball. Hit his chest. May even have gone onto his hand, but he's never having a penalty for that. Yeah. I mean, I, I do feel for Fiorentina that that was given against them as a penalty. Because for me, Scott, he's running right arm by his side. For me, I don't think that should be a penalty. That's definitely, that one's definitely not a penalty, though. I agree with you there. 
Mandrakor, a confirmation that he got booked. And by the way, Fiorentina have made another change uh, in all the bedlam after the West Ham goal. Ricardo Saponara came on for Christian Kuwame, and he's stationed wide left. Ball drops inside the box. Bonaventura scores for Fiorentina. Out of nothing, the diagonal ball was knotted down. Fiorentina are level, and West Ham have got to do it all over again. Bonaventura, so dangerous in those positions. Now the plastic glasses come raining down from the stands away to our left. But that is in celebration from the Fiorentina fans. And West Ham were only in front for a few minutes. The Fiorentina subs have come tearing onto the field to celebrate with their teammates. Great finish from Bonaventura. Fiorentina 1, West Ham 1. Well, just as West Ham were getting a little bit more on the attack, Fiorentina have gone down the other end and it's a really poor goal to consider. See, again that man Amrabat who's just lofted the ball into the box and somehow there's two or three West Ham defenders there first of all Emerson loses the header and no one quite gets tight enough Declan Rice tries to but you have to say from Bonaventura he does really well the first touch he brings down and the second touch he just guides it with his side foot right into the corner and can that Areola have done better in that situation I think that's difficult. That's a really good finish. I watched him in the in the second leg of the semi-final against Basel, Bonaventura, and he gets in so many good goal-scoring positions, and that night he couldn't take his chances. But you're absolutely right, Scott. That is world-class. Gonzalez gets up brilliantly. He's so good in the air to nod it down, but there is so much to do from that point. The ball is bouncing high. Bonaventura kills it with his left foot, perfectly described by Scott Minto, and then rifles the shot into the bottom corner with the right foot. I'm sure Fiorentina, having had that penalty given against them, will probably feel they've got their just desserts we're back at 1-1 here we go well and psychologically you know it, it's Fiorentina who feel better even though it's level it's almost it would have been better from West Ham point of view now to have not scored that goal because you see all the fans of Fiorentina now they've got back into the game the, the players themselves and they believe they can go on and win this game I, look, I think they've been the better side that doesn't mean to say you always deserve to go and win a final you have to find a way to win it but West Ham was so disappointed with that that they couldn't get tighter. But it was a great first touch. And the way he kind of side-footed it, but with pace, giving Ariola not, not, no chance whatsoever. Really good finish. Ben Rama's goal in the 62nd minute. Bonaventura's equaliser in the 67th minute. West Ham led for five minutes in this Europa Conference League final. There's me thinking your 1-0 your was going to be right and my penalties were going to be wrong. Now maybe my penalty. Yeah. I don't know. Scott Minto with us here, Five Live and BBC Sounds. Europa Conference League final, all the noise at the moment being made by those in bright purple away to the left. Shirts are off, flags are waving, they've got the belief. Flair's been let off in that end of the ground as well. Big clouds of smoke billowing up towards the roof of the stand. And West Ham have a free kick to defend. Just over 20 minutes to play. At the moment it's 1-1, if it remains that way, we'll head our way into extra time. Bonaventura, the goal scorer, gets the crossing call, that's a good ball. Header goes straight up in the air and into the arms of, of Ariola. Just looking to see who got on the end of that. It was Mandragora, the midfielder, who could only direct his header straight up above him. But that was a really good cross whipped in from the right from Bonaventura. So West Ham are going to find their feet again. Pakatar uses his feet well on the left. Ben Rama inside him in the central position. Plays in Antonio. Flag stays down. Brilliant save from Terracciano in the one-on-one. -on -one. And then the flag goes up. So it may not have counted the goalkeeper saving with his feet. No, but that's much better from West Ham. That's what they need to be doing. Not just locking, knocking those 40, 50-yard balls up to Mikel Antonio. Play through the thirds. Great skill from Pakatar. And I think Antonio was just offside. Yeah, in fact, it was more than just offside. It was a yard offside. The referee's assistant didn't put the flag up, which absolutely prerogative. You don't need to make sure. And Antonio will be disappointed. He didn't at least put the ball in the back of the net. But much better from West Ham in the way they created that chance. The game has certainly livened up. Goals will tend to do that. Fiorentina 1, West Ham 1. I guess we can be grateful to the video assistant referee for getting involved in giving West Ham the penalty because it certainly sparked Fiorentina uh, into life as well. Back level, ball wide on the right. Gonzalez, couple of tricks, heading for the byline. Crosses through Emerson's legs. Cabral lays it back. Mandragora, just wide. Opened his body up with the left foot and West Ham fans away to our right were dreading the end result. He couldn't quite get it on target. Well, you have to say that is absolutely brilliant play from Fiorentina. First of all, Gonzalez down the right-hand side 
Cabral just realises that he can't get a shot out himself, so he lays it to Mandragora. And that is, what is, to be fair, it's probably about half a yard wide. He's got to hit the target there. But really good play from Fiorentina, the way they opened up the West Ham defence. We've got a game on our hands. Yeah. Hugely dramatic final. Fiorentina won, West Ham won. West Ham have lost it inside their own half. Bonaventura, Cabral making a difference for Fiorentina. Good layoff play. Here he is trying to poke one through to Amrabat. Pakatar holds up the challenge of Mandragora. Gets a foot in. The ball runs to Suchek. Comes off. Suchek's right boot goes out for a throw into Fiorentina. And again, just a big explosion of noise from those Fiorentina fans during every decision that goes their team's way. They certainly feel, as you said, Scott, they've got the momentum and they're playing the better football at the moment. Throwing for them on the left, Captain Biragi, head wrapped in the bright purple bandage, throws it down the line to Amrabat. Little flick looking for Mandragora, cleared by Socek. Milenkovic wins the header, cleared away by Tilo Kera. Kera on the field for Kurt Zuma, who had to go off for West Ham. Ball is headed forward to Amrabat, beg your pardon, Sapanara, who's caught in the offside position. Now he bends down to put his shoelaces up and West Ham will have a free kick and they'd actually be wise here Scott, possibly just to take the sting out of it for a second slow it down absolutely absolutely momentum the psychological side of this tie right now everything is with Fiorentina you can hear the crowd Hammers fans just quieten just for a few moments and yet get the ball down play again don't knock it long just oh, right very nearly onto a loose ball inside the Fiorentina half Bonaventura made the interception that's a brilliant challenge from Emerson on Gonzalez and suddenly West Ham on the front foot on the left with Ben Rama cuts in field looks for a scoop cross into the box Bowen was making the run Socek heads it forward Bowen's well offside but it never got through to him here's Sapanara Sapanara evades the challenge of Socek looks for the run wide on the right from Cabral intercepted by Aguerd and then Emerson is just a little over enthusiastic sorry Ben Rama with the challenge straight through the back of Dodo concedes the free kick yeah it's a bit of a silly challenge didn't need to do that at all and again yeah, didn't need to worry about that being a second yellow but it's another foul he's given away Ben Rama the scorer for West Ham from the penalty spot we're getting another look here at the Fiorentina goal the long ball forward the knockdown by Gonzalez and the whipped finish across the goalkeeper into the bottom corner that's why it's 1-1 Champions League final on the way, five live and BBC Sounds on Saturday night, full commentary live from Istanbul as Manchester City try and add the Champions League title to the Premier League title and FA Cup already won. West Ham here being held at 1-1, Cabral leaps for the ball, Aguerd is with him, comes off Aguerd to Emerson, Emerson clears, first time down the left, Pakatar gives chase, got a bit more pace here, then Milenkovic, Milenkovic is worried about that, drags him to the floor, he'll get booked for that, and West Ham will get a free kick in a good attacking position on the left hand side. Showed good pace there Pakatar didn't he, ball was just played long by Emerson, Milenkovic had about a yard, yard and a half on him, but still got round the back and was pulled down almost like in rugby style and that's the yellow card and we're looking at the first West Ham change on the way shortly from David Moyes played 75 minutes in the game might have to peer through the binoculars actually to see who's coming on but they're all blurred because they're not focused properly so that's going to be no good I'll tell you what we'll do Scott we'll wait for the ball to go up Pablo Fornals it is I was about to say don't look at me for help You're, my eyes are much worse than yours Free kick for West Ham, 15 minutes to play off the 90, Fiorentina 1, West Ham 1, and Emerson getting ready to take this free kick. 40 yards out on the left, delivers with his left foot, headed away by Milenkovic, might pull in, so foul! Hits the bouncing ball way off target, high and wide and behind for a goal kick. He's never scored for West Ham. Tonight would be a very good night to do it. He's not going to do it like that. For anybody in the West Ham shirt, it would be a very good night to do it. And I, do you know what I was about to say? You know, in terms of the plane, how it's gone, take the penalty out of the situation. Ben Rama, you know, I, I can understand that substitution, but as we get ever closer towards extra time and penalties, you're taking off your best penalty taker. Yeah, six out of six this season and coolness personified under the biggest of pressure tonight. Applause to West Ham fans, off he goes. West Ham's second substitution, I beg your pardon, in this second half. Of course, Zuma off injured and Tilo Kera 
on to replace him. Yeah, David Moyes will, will, I'm sure, rightly say, well, look, we've got to worry about the 15 minutes first, and then if there's extra time, worry about the 30 minutes then. Ball breaks for Gonzalez inside the West Ham half. White shirts desperately chasing back. Good ball from Gonzalez to Sapanara. Sapanara looking for the curler. Sofal turns his back but blocks it well. Ranieri's going to try a drive. Awful hit. Scuffs it badly and hooks it straight to the edge of the box. Cleared away. Poor clearance there from Pablo Fornaus. Gave the ball away to Sapanara. Biragi hits it with his right foot straight to Ariola, who makes a very comfortable catch. And head fight. Yeah, it wasn't a bad strike for Biragi, but you know the left back on his right foot over 20 yards out shouldn't be beaten from there he's never going to be beaten from there Ariola. which way is it going to go tonight I'm sure if you're a West Ham fan listening to us on 5 Live and BBC Sound this is absolute torture as Ariola clears with his right foot Socek flicks the ball on Jared Bowen does well to control that with his chest just flicks on forward to Antonio Antonio is offside the advantage is going to be played Ranieri brings it away down the left inside his own half plays the ball into midfield Bonaventura looking for an option little flick Antonio read it great work from Antonio it's come a long way back to win that ball for West Ham and plays it back to Ariola. do you know what that's absolutely brilliant work from Antonio but I'd still much rather see him conserve his energy and, and, and stay up there you know, let the midfielders worry about that really because he's going to be extra tired all the running that he's done with the two centre halves hanging off him you know, it's, it's a long night for him he hasn't been given quality service he needs to conserve his energy because I'm sure now he's getting very very tired pressure on every touch for both sets of players at the moment Declan Rice loving it though comes striding forward for West Ham inspirational run not the best of passes interception from Bonaventura he's looking for the ball to four nows and the ball will go out for a throw into West Ham wide on the left Fiorentina played down possibly with Cramp just outside his penalty area might be Luca Ranieri the centre back he's been busy in attacking positions and at the back of Fiorentina so that's got to be dealt with uh, as well we were slightly surprised when we saw him as yeah. in the team sheet weren't we well Lucas Martinez the Argentine and Igor the Brazilian both on the bench have been regular starters this season where Ranieri hasn't but it's only his 12th start this exactly season. exactly but I think Italiano is, is that kind of manager he just uh, goes with his gut and makes some big calls Sapanara defending for Fiorentina in a tight spot down in the left back position clears and turns with his left foot West Ham fans you heard them go up for a handball call so foul queries it as well it will be a throwing for West Ham in an attacking position on the right Fiorentina 1 West Ham 1 it's not really a handball it bounced up of his hip and hit him on the elbow but West Ham do have the throw and we have got 11 minutes remaining of the 90. So foul throw in towards the near post. Antonio tries to flick it on Mike Foyer. Sotek shot blocked. Then it's cut back across goal. Blocked at the near post and hacked away. And actually, I think there's going to be a free kick for Fiorentina, judging by the referee's arm movement there. Milenkovic is down on his back in the six-yard box. So there must have been a challenge on him. But there was a right old scramble in the box there. And West Ham were desperately trying to force that ball across. the It's Antonio's back heel attempt that his boot actually catches yeah, Milenkovic in the face. Yeah, but Milinkovic has gone down to almost below, well, maybe waist high. So yes, the, the foot comes out, but he's also put his head down into it. But I suppose if he's caught, head injury, he did the foul. Fiorentina 1, West Ham 1. Former West Ham defender Scott Minto with us on 5 Live and BBC Sounds tonight. Jonathan Wood getting Chris Sutton part of the team for the Champions League final this weekend. Big preview show Friday night at 7 o'clock with... Darren Fletcher uh, at the helm, head of Manchester City, into Milan. Five Live Football Daily podcast, uh, of course, if you're not a subscriber to that as yet, I can assure you that will be a very good listen over the coming days. Head to that BBC Sounds app, search for the Football Daily, click subscribe, all the reaction to tonight's drama, the big football stories uh, as well, Lionel Messi. Uh, off to Inter Miami, Jude Bellingham off to, to Real Madrid, all the build up to the Champions League final uh, as well. So the Football Daily uh, is the place to go. Ten minutes remaining in the second half, and at the moment it's still 1 1. Two goals in the space of five minutes. Ben Rama from the penalty spot for West Ham, he's now off, couldn't take a penalty in the shootout if it comes. Bonaventura with the equaliser. Long ball forward from Aguirre to the edge of the box. Great leap from Socek and Terracciano has to throw himself to his right to palm it behind for a corner. I think that was possibly going wide. It's some header from Socek. Yeah, I'm not quite sure that was going on target, but it was a great header, wasn't it? When he gets that run and leap, 
Well, I'm not sure. So no actually. Yeah, 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 looking at it again. Still wasn't the best of angles to look at that, but that might have been sneaking in. You don't get many headers scored from that sort of range, edge of the box. Great effort from Socek. Here's the corner for West Ham. Emerson's delivery. Socek jumps again, beaten at the near post. Bowen is up, but can only flick it backwards here. Bowen's down her edge of the box. Play continues. Declan Rice, there might be too much on that cross there is. Yeah, he's overhit it. And he's gone behind for a goal kick to Fiorentina. Yeah, he has. That was a really good opportunity as well from the captain and best player as well, just to kind of whip it in behind the Fiorentina defence and he's just got too much on it. 22 years for Fiorentina since they last won a major trophy, 43 years for West Ham, FA Cup final 1980. Both with one major European trophy in the cabinet as well, who is going to take home the big prize tonight. We are no clearer to knowing that at this point, eight minutes remaining in the 90. And this will be a goal kick to Fiorentina, taken by Terracciano with his right foot. Downfield it goes, Cabralic bounces off him, falls to Bonaventura. Bonaventura just inside the West Ham half, plays it back to Dodo. Fiorentina getting ready to make another change here, late in his second half, as Amrabat never stops running. Absolutely tireless in the Fiorentina midfield. Clever pass beyond Bowen. Plays it here to Milenkovic. Milenkovic has got space to work with. Doesn't look too sure of himself. Drives forward and then hits a nice diagonal. Controlled on the fly by Sakanara. Thought about crossing it in with his right foot. Lays it back to Biragi. Then Amrabat. Amrabat's driven cross towards the far post. Read by Emerson and headed away. Bounces in front of four now. It's not a good pass. Miss Q couldn't find Declan Rice. Ball given away by West Ham. Amrabat with a clever bit of disguise on the pass. Plays it forward to Gonzalez. Now at the feet of Bonaventura for Fiorentina. Back again to Biragi. Fiorentina have only lost two of their last 16 in Serie A towards the end of this season. Good team, an informed team. Had the heartbreak of Coppa Italia final defeat recently. Biragi hits a wild shot from a long, long way out, drags it terribly, and behind it goes for a goal kick. That's just running out of ideas. Well, there. it is, and it's tiredness. You know, he's 40 yards out. OK, he's got a very, very good left foot. You know that. He definitely makes assists, but you don't shoot from there. Just keep it going. Change then coming for Fiorentina. Luca Ranieri, the centre-back, is coming off, who we were just talking about, and it is Igor, the Brazilian. So Ranieri was down with cramp. Big night for him great night for him as well he's one of those that's come all the way through the youth system at Fiorentina mainly been a backup centre back this season has played a big part in the European final tonight and Igor is a big fella comes on at centre back I'll tell you what I wouldn't want to have an arm wrestle with him no no flick on from Pakatar headed away by Milenkovic volleyed forward by Sofal Fornals chases flag stays down tries to flick a header into the box towards Bowen doesn't get it right straight at the goalkeeper Fornals hasn't got used to the pace of the game at the moment he's given the ball away on three or four occasions need West Ham need him to be coming on and, and doing something different something that Ben Rama wasn't doing at the moment I think he's playing worse than Ben Rama was when he was on the pitch yeah Antonio's back there trying to win a ball for West Ham they have won it but now they don't have a centre forward and Emerson crosses the halfway line and is looking for options Antonio is there wide on the left Fornals has drifted infield to that centre forward position that was a, an unwise challenge from Amrabat goes sliding in on Emerson Emerson's hurt and actually waves his arm in the air as if to say that he needs treatment but again it's given West Ham a free kick right out on the touchline on the left hand side level with the edge of the box and he didn't really need to oh, he's, and he's booked for it as well is Amrabat well he didn't need to he's, he's gone down he's the best player on the pitch so far why get yourself a yellow card and also give yourself a dangerous position defensively where when things are so tight what do people say well you're trying to have a good set piece this is a great opportunity for West Ham to score a goal and a set piece well 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 this would be the perfect time. 86th minute of the game on a knife edge. Europa Conference League final. Can someone be a hero for West Ham? This man, the captain, Declan Rice, is going to take the free kick from wide on the left. Socek up there. Aguerd up there. Antonio up there. Bowen up there. Starting to make his run. 
Kerr lurking at the far post. Whistle blows. Rice puts his arm in the air. Pace delivery with the right foot into the near post. That's a really good header away by the centre forward Cabral. Now Fiorentina try and come on the break. So far is back there to tidy up for West Ham. Sapanara continues the chase. It's back with Ariola. Ariola flicks it forward with his right foot. Biragi leaps, wins the header. Out it goes for a West Ham throw. Steal yourselves, everyone. I think you may well be heading to extra time. A wonderful sight of so many replica shirts around the ground and on the way to this stadium. Long throw from Sofal down towards Bowen. I think it was that throw that led to the penalty, wasn't it, where Bowen got in behind? Yeah. Absolutely. That's exactly what it was. And Gerard Bowen was looking for the, the same thing as well. And that when things are so tight, it's about moments. Can you find the moment? Jared Bowen found the moment to get in behind Baragi and to, to win the penalty. Now they've got to do something again. They're not playing particularly well, West Ham, but stay in the game, don't concede again, and find the moment, whether that be a set piece, whether it be Jared Bowen getting on the ball, Lucas Pacata. I want Mikel Antonio to stay further up, conserve his energy, not tire. So when the ball comes to him, he's ready to try and do something with it. At the moment, he's working too much defensively, and West Ham aren't really able to get out. Scott Mento with us live in Prague, fearing to one West Ham one heading towards extra time in the Europa Conference League final only the second year of this competition Italian winners last year Jose Mourinho taking Roma to the title David Moyes would love to add it to his long long successful managerial career but it really would be the first big major title for him and I saw him furiously clapping his hands together waving his arms trying to get more from his team now he's got his head in his hands because they've given the ball away but inside the Fiorentina half and we're into the 88th minute of this final Sochet putting pressure on Igor Igor plays back here to Terracciano Terracciano across to Dodo Dodo still has energy to come barreling forward he throws himself into a long right-footed diagonal Sapanar on the half volley knocks it down the line for Mandragora Pakatar is back there for West Ham decides to keep the ball in play and now he's under pressure in the right-back position Mandragora right behind him Fiorentina have won it you know cross comes in from Mandragora laid off to Amrabat fancies the shot hits the shot and Ariola's down and saves here is right hand post well look the shot came from about what 25 yards out but if Ariola had spilled that there were two Fiorentina players who are going right towards waiting for that spill and Pakistan just losing the ball there what's he doing you know just get rid of it if you have to don't try and keep it and, and bring you know two Fiorentina players onto you Jukai Antonio great skill from him wriggles round Igor Igor has to drag him back if we are heading towards that penalty shootout well certainly West Ham players in this squad who've taken them and would be confident of taking them Pakatar's done it this season he's scored a couple Jared Bowen I think he's won from two this season Antonio's taken them before but not this season Manuel Lanzini's on the bench he's two from two this season uh, Aaron Cresswell's done it in shootouts as well I wonder how many would be confident in I know it's different yeah it's very different tonight so far with a free kick from a long way out Lots it high in the air goalkeeper under so much pressure knew what was coming there so Jack comes flying at him and he wins the free kick for Fiorentina we're in the 90th minute of the game of course West Ham's last appearance in the major final ended with a penalty shootout they were so close weren't they to winning that FA Cup final 2006 Gerrard's goal on to penalties the players to miss that day Bobby Zamora Paul Kinchesky and Anton Ferdinand which gave Liverpool that trophy but we're a wee way from that just yet 30 minutes of extra time possibly to come as well and still some added time here at the end of this game for one of these teams to try and find a winner Pakatar looking to release Bowen flag stays down Bowen's through one on one hits the shot and finds the back of the net and the offside flag stays down and the West Ham fans go absolutely berserk there are plastic plate glasses going everywhere inside the stadium all of the West Ham substitutes the coaching staff come tearing onto the field has Jared Bowen won the Miss European trophy put clean through on goal kept his head knocks it past the keeper it will be checked by the video assistant referee but we're now in added time at the end of the game and West Ham are within touching distance of the first major trophy in 43 years he's onside he 
is well on side. And I'll tell you what, that is the perfect run from Jared Bowen. The keeper actually does him a favour by coming out because Igor's coming down back on him. Great pass from Pakatai, you have to say. Fantastically timed run from Jared Bowen. He takes that first touch. I think on the next touch, Igor would have got closer to him. But the keeper comes out, means that he has to have the shot, and had gone in the back of the net. I talked about moments. Some player finding a moment to try and win this competition. Has Jared Bowen done that? I spoke to him at the press conference last night and I told him that West Ham fans were pinching themselves that they made this final. He said he was pinching himself, that he joined the club three years ago and if you said to him you would be in a European final in three years' time, he wouldn't have believed you. Well, tonight he might be the West Ham hero that wins them the trophy, the first major trophy for almost half a century, a second major European trophy for West Ham and we're waiting to find out now how much added time there is at the end of the game. Incredible scenes of celebration. Jared Bowen didn't score in the quarterfinals, didn't score in the semi-finals, but has saved the big one for the final. Right at the end of the 90 minutes, West Ham in front, five minutes of added time remaining. West Ham are five minutes away from winning the big one. Jared Bowen now defending at right back, wins a free kick for West Ham, and actually celebrates in the face of the Fiorentina fans. What an incredible night it is turning out to be. Uh, we are just minutes away. And I'll tell you what, Jared Bowen tracking back there and winning that free kick. Look, two things. First of all, on the first goal, it's Jared Bowen who's won the penalty by being very clever for that quick throw in in behind. Second of all, for that second goal, Pakata with the first touch and then a delightful pass just in behind. Absolutely superb, but fair play to Jared Bowen there. Great finish. And it couldn't have been a much better time to score a second goal. Back in 1965 at Wembley against 1860 Munich, it was Ron Greenwood's team full of heroes. West Ham heroes out on the field in Prague this evening. Three minutes away and counting from winning the Europa Conference League. Ariola's clearance downfield. Pakatar is penalised for a foul. Fiorentina have got to throw absolutely everything at it. What a competition this has been for West Ham this season. Because the Premier League form, by comparison, has been so, so poor. But in this competition, if they go on to win this one, 14 wins and a draw in 15 games is utterly remarkable. And David Moyes is putting his name down alongside, if they win it, Ron Greenwood and John Lyle as the only West Ham managers to win major trophies for West Ham United. He's come under a lot of pressure this season. This competition has probably kept him his job. And he is now a couple of minutes away. And I know his dad, David, is in the stands here as well from the biggest moment of his managerial career. And he has been doing it for a quarter of a century. And, you know, take yourself back to November or December. If anyone has said that this could happen, he was under pressure with the Premier League season he had. Still got to see this game out. Couple of minutes to go. Fiorentina 1, West Ham 2. Jared Bowen with the goal late on. Igor inside his own half. Can Fiorentina fashion one last late chance? Hiragi, long ball forward. Gonzalez up brilliantly to win the header. Bonaventura nods it forward. Kera throws himself in the way. Clears with his left foot. Bowen tries to control it. Cleared by Biragi. Pakatar dances into a leaping left foot volley. Clears it deep into the Fiorentina half. And we are now into the 95th minute of the game. I think we'll go a little bit beyond the five added minutes. Because when the five added minutes went up, there were so many celebrations after the West Ham goal. But they are so close, they can almost taste it. Bonaventura on the ball for Fiorentina. Bright purple shirts pouring forward into the West Ham half. And here's Doe on the ball Amrabat little right footed ball forward the check on home turf Antonin Barrick to Sapanara Sapanara's cross is blocked it doesn't go out for a corner it goes out for a throw to Fiorentina they are so nearly there West Ham here's Amrabat looking to get the cross in with his left foot deflected loops to the edge of the box not it down might fall to Cabral no it doesn't Fornals clears with his left foot all eyes on the referee Declan Rice waving tired bodies up the field West Ham subs waiting on their feet on the edge of the pitch waiting to come on and celebrate 
Dodo slips. Pacatar said he handballed it. Fiorentina are allowed to continue. Dodo's ball to the edge of the box. Barak nods it down. Keep it. Doesn't get it to a teammate. Scott Minto says keep it to Sofal. So no, brilliant. No, brilliant. And we're over the five minutes now, so we're literally seconds. Seconds away. Keep your eyes on the referee. Has a look at the watch. 5,000 West Ham fans inside the stadium. Probably 20,000 or more in the centre of Prague, waiting for wild celebrations, defending to do though. Cabral loses control on the edge of the box. Emerson chips it away with his left foot. Knocked up towards Fornals. Fornals is tackled. Fiorentina give it away though. West Ham keep playing. 96 minutes now played, over a minute beyond the minimum allotted time. But the ball is inside the Fiorentina half. That is exactly what West Ham won. Pacatars knocked to the floor. He wins the free kick for West Ham. He stays down injured, holding his left knee. But when he gets to his feet, they will almost be there, West Ham. Firagi is remonstrating with Jared Bowen. But West Ham are closing this game down. And I'll tell you what, Scott Minto, I watched David Moyes celebrate when they won in Altmar in the semi-final. I've never seen him look happier. I mean, he will be a picture to behold this yeah, evening, won't he? And, and, and the pictures are on him, and they're, they're saying, he's saying, one more minute, one more minute, see this minute out. One more minute, David Moyes. That 100-yard stare right across the pitch, concentrate, he's saying to his players, don't let it slip now. They've not been brilliant tonight, West Ham, but they've found two crucial goals. The penalty from Ben Rama brilliantly struck, and it looks like the winner from Jared Bowen, they've given it away from the free kick. More tension for the West Ham fans. Heading into the 97th minute of the game, 98th minute of the game now. West Ham leading 2-1. Aguer heads it away into the Fiorentina half. Four nows can't control it. West Ham subs baying for the referee to blow the whistle, but still we play. Terracciano, long ball downfield. Headed away by Socek. Nodded forward by Amrabat for Fiorentina. Emerson jumps in the way and blocks it. And still we go on. West Ham's moment is almost there. The ref he says throw in for Fiorentina on the right Amrabat is down hurt he's got to get up he's got to keep playing they're almost out of time Fiorentina there's, there's no way there's been an extra two and a half minutes on top of the five minutes Where, where's the referee found that from? West Ham leading 2-1 the last thing they've got to do tonight is try and defend Fiorentina set piece which is going to come from deep from wide on the right you almost can't bear to watch last major trophy FA Cup final 1980 can this be the one tonight? The Fiorentina goalkeeper's up. Ariola's up, completely misses it, goes through his hands. And behind and away for a goal kick. And are we even going to have time for the goal kick? And now there's a bit of push and shove. The full-time whistle blows. One of the greatest nights in West Ham's history. They've won a major European trophy again for the first time since 1965. Declan Rice leads the charge. The West Ham players go sprinting towards... Rice slides down on his knees in probably his last ever game for West Ham. But tonight he is going to hoist high a trophy, a major trophy, and become only the third West Ham captain after Bobby Moore and Billy Bonds to do that in the long, long history of the football club. And David Moyes' face is wreathed in smiles. He, he cannot believe it. He genuinely looks like he cannot believe it. He is punching the air in delight. And I'll tell you what, Scott, when you have worked that long in football and had some great times, but had some real heartbreak as well, you can't help but feel pleased when he's dancing, David Moyes. The West Ham players are all dancing as well. It's an incredible sight to behold inside the Eden Arena because away to our left, fans in bright purple in tears stood still applauding their heroes. But away to the right, it's dancing, it's singing, it's jumping, it's celebrating. It's West Ham's night, the first major trophy since 1980. They've beaten Fiorentina by two goals to one, and I think that is my voice about done. Scott Minto. <laughs> Well, honestly, I think, again, we've talked about finding ways to win. I don't think West Ham were very good this evening in terms of how they played the game, but when you're not playing well in a major final, you try and find that way. They just conceded the one goal, and it looked like for all the world it was going towards extra time. But I tell you what, Jared Bowen and Lucas Bakatar with that first touch, the pass, the finish, absolutely incredible. Kieran 
Fiorentina manager Vincenzo Italiano in very heated debate with the referee, possibly about the penalty that West Ham were given, stuck away by Ben Rama. Fiorentina responded well and equalised, but Jared Bowen's 90th minute winner, and you can hear it, I'm sure you can picture it, it's absolute bedlam. West Ham fans and players all together, singing and dancing and celebrating. They have won the Europa Conference League, and I'll tell you what, the scenes in Prague tonight, Mark Chapman, because there are well over 20,000 West Ham fans easily over here in the city tonight. It is going to be wild. What, what an incredible night for West Ham Football Club, and they really didn't play that well.